The length of your backswing is going to determine so much about the quality of your golf swing and your ball striking. But do you want to swing long? Do you want to swing short? If you get it wrong, you are always going to be chasing your tail. You're always going to struggle. So I'm going to show you the benefits and the negatives of a long swing and a short swing, but also a very important test to find out which is going to work best for you. Longer swing is generally more in keeping with what I like to try and get through to you, which is to have a more effortless feeling golf swing. A bit looser in the wrists, a bit more freedom, a bit more like that. But the downsides are, if you do not allow your body to move a little bit easier, you're going to struggle because you're just going to be out of sync and swinging longer and trying to time it all. If you struggle to be able to move with enough dynamic effort back through to the ball all of this way, you're going to really struggle to be consistent. So minor changes you can make to help your swing is to flare the feet out a little bit. And I want you to feel that your core and your hips have just a little bit more movement in them here. And the main thing is the arms are to feel very heavy. So we can swing longer with very little effort. What can happen is we get just too quick and rushed trying to hit this ball so hard. So having a more languid, longer feel is going to give you a bit more patience when you hit it. But we can't just swing longer for the sake of swinging longer by putting the arms like up, over hinging the elbows or whatever it might be. It has to still be in connection. When you sort of hold the club and set up, I want you to feel like the back of your arms here are resting on top of your chest, like so. They're kind of pinned down almost. Not the elbows. I'm not really tight in with the elbows here. It's just the top of the chest. The triceps are resting on the top. Why? That's going to give me a modicum of connection. It's going to keep my torso connected but allow the freedom of movement of my arms and wrists so I can swing longer. I couple that with a bit more sort of movement getting the butt facing the target a little bit more. Allowing this front leg to move if it needs to is going to help me get that power from a longer swing, but still stay connected. So with a short swing, we can get stabby. Because we're short, we're trying to hit it harder. We, we know that we're only here, and we're trying to muscle it with the body. We're trying to do something like this. It's not the short swing's fault, it's your intent. Let's enhance the short swing. The negatives are that it's going to affect your tempo, and you might lose a bit of distance. But if you can, Make sure that your setup is supporting a shorter swing, meaning you still are going to allow the lower body to turn and rotate. You can still wind up this way. It's not just a sort of bent arm move like this. But what you're going to find is if you have, especially with irons and even driver, you want to have a little bit more weight on your front side. That's going to help use this lead side as like a hinge, as a pivot. And we only have to really swing to about here to be able to drop the club back down. So have a little bit more weight on the front side. Really do focus on having soft wrists. And when you make your backswing, instead of rushing down, I want you to really get good at the feeling of floating, that your arms are floating in transition. What I mean is we are here, but instead of rushing back down towards the ball, we are going to feel that the club is still traveling back this way as our intention, as our body moves and falls back towards the ball. It's this floating sensation, this delay in time. Think of John Rahm. He does it spectacularly well. And he also, to help this, allows his heel to raise. From the back foot here, or the front foot, he allows his heel to raise on his backswing. And in his transition, he plants that heel back down. That is his cue to work on his sequence. So that's what I suggest for you. Set up with a bit more weight on the front side. Turn your right toe out. Allow the heel to raise just a little bit and transition down, keeping that fluid 
sensation. And I promise you, with a short swing, you can be not only consistent, but you can still get power. Here's an extra thing you can do with the shorter swing to maximize your distances without really hitting it harder. And it works great with the driver. With the driver, we don't want to be hitting at the ball. And what can happen is if your swing is short, that can sort of be overemphasized. We have to focus on getting through, not hitting at, even with a short swing. So I want you to make some practice swings, okay? From a very short sort of delivery beforehand. But what you're going to try and do is get this core through and keep the arms straight. It's almost like a big power punch. But this is going to stop that sort of look where you're short but your body is stalled. We want to try and push with the legs through. This is great for all the golfers as well to push those legs through. Keeping those arms a little bit straighter. So from a short swing we push and you'll be amazed at the distances you can get with that pushing movement using the legs keeping those arms straighter and the core through. It's not a conclusive lesson giving you everything there is for a longer golf swing or a short golf swing. It's trying to introduce your brain to help you follow one of the paths, but also to use that test, find your ideal backswing length. Let me know if you have any questions, but I also want you to go and check out this lesson right here. It is gonna help you a ton to simplify the swing, but really refine a short swing and a long swing to take your game and swing to the next level, no matter what age you are. See you next time.